Hey Head Squeezers, I hope you're well. So today's video is all about a number of questions that you've sent in on the topic of smell. Now I've done some videos on smell before for Head Squeeze, including how the smell of your BO can help you pull, and also why sometimes your farts really stink. This one though, I wanna look at how you actually smell something, and how come most of you are gonna like the smell of a rose, but most of you are gonna really not like the smell of a wet dog. First though, before I go into that, a question for you all. How many smells, how many different scents do you think you can distinguish between? Here's some ballpark numbers as you're making your mind up. Um, in terms of auditory noises, so different tones, different notes, your ears and your brain can distinguish around about 340,000. Now for colours, your eyes and your brain can distinguish between close to a whopping 7 million different shades. So what about smells? How many different scents do you think you can distinguish between? Well, the old answer, the one that's been around for years, is about 10,000. But some new research came out just a couple of months ago, March 2014, by a team at Rockefeller University in New York, and their new figure is close to one trillion. So they reckon your brain can distinguish between one trillion different scents. So what is smell? Well, the lead researcher of that study, Andreas Keller, pointed out that the smell of a rose isn't just one scent. You actually get 275 different components. Each component is a different odour molecule. Now, as you breathe in, you pull those odour molecules up into your nasal cavity and they fall on a very small area, only the size of about a square inch, known as the olfactory epithelium. That's covered in mucus, so it dissolves all those odour molecules and they're able to interact with the olfactory hairs inside your receptor cells. Now, here's the cool thing. Your receptor cells actually pick up one particular type of odour molecule each. They send a particular signal to a specific part of your brain known as the olfactory bulb and a specific point within it. So that means that your brain could put that particular pattern of electrical activity all together from all of those different odour molecules and work out the whole smell. But the thing is, scientists aren't exactly certain on how the receptor cells interact with the odour molecules. Some think it's all down to the shape of the odour molecule, some think it's down to the, the vibrations of the odour molecule. There's a really good TED talk on this if you want to read up on it more. Just look down in the video description below. So that's how you sense the smell, but what determines whether you like or dislike it? Some smells have a really strong emotional connection. As Rudyard Kipling actually once wrote, smells are surer than sights and sounds to make your heartstrings crack. So a question for you guys. Do you think there are universal smells that we all like or all dislike? Well, scientists are still discussing this one, but the majority of them seem to think that the way that a smell makes you feel is all down to the previous emotional connections and associations that you've forged with it. So say the first time you smell cut grass, it's a lovely summer's day, start of summer, nice and sunny, and you're really happy. The next time you smell cut grass, you may think, oh, it's the start of summer, or you may feel really happy or summery, or you may just sneeze if you've got hay fever, I guess. Um, what about skunks? Now, most people hate the smell of skunks, right? But this lady, Rachel Hertz, a psychologist from Brown University, she actually likes the smell of skunks. Yeah, she reckons it's because the first time she smelt it, her mum said, doesn't that smell nice? Now, the emotional associations we have is all down to the way that your brain is wired. The olfactory bulb is part of your limbic system. It's very close to the amygdala that looks after emotions and the hippocampus that looks after long-term memories. There's a really interesting bit of research that I read on this that said that what a baby essentially smells and tastes in the womb will dictate what they like later in life. So if a mum eats a lot of garlic during pregnancy, the baby will smell and taste lots of garlic and they may like it more when they grow up. As the scientists who did it, uh, the study said, familiarity breeds fondness. 
Have a look at the footnotes below this video if you want to read anything more on this and also get the other side of the discussion. The scientists that think that the way that you perceive smell is not down to subjective emotions at all, it's down to universal laws that govern what controls that. A bonus fact before I go, of course, astronauts say that space smells a kind of acrid smell of hot metal, seared steak or welding fumes. Anyway, that's all the time I've got right now. As usual, please do send us in your questions, put them in the comments down below this video. And until next time, happy head squeezing. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Just don't make too much mess, yeah? yeah. In there, in there. Yeah. Beautiful. In there. Easy. Easy. <laughs> well done, Steve. Let's get the sheep. <laughs>